regenerating scarred lung tissue. Reversing lung scarring itself, fibrosis, and everything else along those lines. Sometimes what happens with research, the results of the research them, uh, leave the scientists who basically did the study themselves awestruck in total surprise. That is what happened here. So with that in mind, keep uh, in perspective that this is an association. It's not a direct causal relationship established as yet. And again, this is an animal model, means the results need to be reproduced in human trials, hopefully near in the future, I should say, in the very near future. Let's go right into the study itself and read an excerpt just so it can grab you and hang you on until the end of this one particular segment itself, because it is fascinating. And I'm not doing it justice by only doing it in a few minutes, but here we go. All right, if they introduce something called RAGE, RAGE stands for Receptor of Advanced Glycation End Products. Into the lungs of mice, with the help of a modified virus, it was not only DNA repair that normalized. To the scientist's surprise, the scar tissue regenerated and regained some of its functionality. It gets even better than that. So keep in mind, let's with that, we'll go right into the public citation or the public uh, stated article, then we'll read a little bit from the abstract. In the public stated article citation itself, endogenous protein reverses scarring in the lungs. Their title. The endogenous protein rage, which has been usually negatively associated with chronic inflammation and diabetic complications, plays a major role in the repair of DNA damage and also appears to heal tissue damage as a result of accelerated senescence. So basically, without the technical terms, when this uh, rage is outside the cell, it is like a horde of raging bulls in a china shop. When it's inside the cell, it is like an adorable litter of puppies with DNA repair superpowers. To proceed, this molecular mechanism was described and studied by scientists from Heidelberg University Hospital, the German Center for Diabetes Research, which was published in the October issue of the journal Nucleic Acid Research, this 2017. They discovered the potential therapeutic benefit of the protein in mice that were unable to produce rage. So it kind of gives them an idea of what happens when it's not there. As a result of the limited DNA repair, they pronounced pulmonary fibrosis, meaning when the rage end product is low in the cells itself, things begin to go bad, scarring, cancers, just nasty stuff all along when it's not adequately uh, at the proper levels inside the cell itself. So after treatment with the protein, adding rage into the system, the scarring healed. So, uh, after treatment with protein scarring healed, quote, this astonishing that fibrosis has so far been considered irreversible. And all of a sudden now, what was seen as being the end, now there's hope. Something happened in the body where this one particular thing, which was seen, the scarring was just basically, that's it, you've got to cut it out, we've got to do whatever. But the body, or at least in those organisms and mice, was able to actually reverse the process of scarring. So to proceed, with RAGE, we could have the first, for the first time have found a possible starting point to cure this frequent tissue damage. Now we move to the abstract to read a couple of excerpts and it gets even more stimulating as follows. Homeostatic nuclear RAGE ATM interaction essential for efficient DNA repair. Here's the one excerpt. The current study shows the reconstitution of RAGE reverses defective DNA repair and a, uh, SASP. Most surprisingly, reintroduction of RAGE, but not its phosphorylated mutant, even reverses fibrosis and normalizes in part lung function. Now for the best part in regard to the discussion in their abstract itself, remember the, this is gonna be from the abstract, not from the article, as follows. Future studies need to show how RAGE, in addition to support DNA repair, can also induce, ready for this? Induce remission of fibrosis within four weeks only, and how it can normalize lung function to a large extent. Nevertheless, the data shows that fibrosis might no longer be considered a point of no return. Again, they need to validate this in future studies. The scientists themselves looking at this going scratching their heads, this is just insane, we're gonna find out exactly how it works and why, what mechanism works. So looking to validate this research, and just not so much even the lungs, to show you the next picture here, and it's gonna be a picture afterward to show you exactly what happens when not enough rage in the system per se or it's in the cell. But look 
at uh, basically how far this research or how many uh, avenues and venues it can actually cover. Heart, brain, liver, kidney, intestine, all or need rage possibly in order to reverse any particular scarring or DNA uh, damage itself. Again, fascinating, fascinating. It's it, what you may call experimental protocol, just something that's recently just discovered itself, it needs to be validated. But the one important thing to take away from this is that fibrosis to scarring is not, no longer, an irreversible condition. Now the question really is just how and why and when and what is the best course in order to reverse it from this point on. Again, this is Ralph Trick Channel signing off. Hope you find this information of use. And thank you very much for listening. As always, and see you all again in seven days. Catch you then. Bye.